Hey everybody, thanks for watching A Guy Doing Stuff. I'm Adam and today I'm going to be applying a true oil finish. There's literally an unlimited number of ways you can finish a guitar. It's one of those things that can get really complicated and overwhelming for a beginner. This process I'm about to show you I got from Eric Schaefer's guitar building series. I learned most of what I know about guitar building from Eric's videos. I really liked his method for finishing, so I'm going to be pretty much doing exactly what he described in his series. I'll put a link to his stuff too in my video description so you can watch his also. I'm going to be using several different products in this video, so I figured I'd explain all of them before I get started. I'll fill the porous woods with this aqua coat water-based pore filler, then I'll wipe the guitar down with naphtha to clean it, then I'm going to rub on true oil gunstock finish thinned with mineral spirits, and then I'll polish it with this Stumac polishing compound. I'll put links to all this stuff in my video description too. To prep for this, I spent a lot of time making sure everything was sanded down to 220 grit again. I put tape over the fretboard and the bridge because those don't get the true oil finish. And then I wiped everything down with naphtha. I also cleaned my whole shop this morning one more time just to reduce the dust. I'll be hanging my guitar from the ceiling when I'm applying the coat so it doesn't have to rest on anything. I just put a coat hanger through one of the tuner machine holes and hang it from a chain. I hold it by the neck when I'm applying the coats and then finish with the neck shaft while I'm supporting it by the taped fretboard. It's kind of a three-part process, so I'm going to break the rest of this video down into sections. Zircote and mahogany are really porous woods. It would take forever to build up enough oil to fill the pores, so I'm going to use the aqua coat to fill them before I apply the true oil. I get a little bit of it on a paper towel and wipe it directly onto the wood. It dries pretty quickly, so you'll want to do this in sections. I wipe it all over the area pretty generously, wait a couple seconds, then just wipe it right back off with a clean paper towel. Spruce is not a porous wood, so I'm not going to bother doing the soundboard. I put little strips of tape on the crevices at the neck joint here, because it's kind of hard to clean the pore filler out of tight spaces. I'll take the tape off after I'm done sanding down the pore filler. I do the heel, then the headstock, then finish with the neck shaft. I wait an hour for it to dry, then come back and sand it down to the grain and clean it again. One coat's enough sometimes, but I want to be sure all the pores are filled, so I do that same process a second time. After I sand it the second round, I wipe everything down with naphtha, then I wipe it all down with a tack cloth. I'm going to apply 15 really thin coats of true oil. Each one of those coats takes 3 or 4 hours to dry, so this whole thing is going to end up taking me about a week or two. You apply the oil with this cotton pad called a mouse. I fold some t-shirt fabric into a really tight little ball. And then I wrapped the ball in an old white cotton bed sheet I cut up into squares because it was the most lint-free cloth I could find in my house. I mix the true oil into this mason jar with mineral spirits. I'm going to be using a 3 to 2 ratio for every coat. That's 3 parts true oil to 2 parts mineral spirits. I dip the mouse in the mix and let it soak for a second. You want to get it saturated, but you don't want to get it too wet. So to distribute the oil, I pound it on my workbench several times and wipe it around vigorously until it's about the right amount of dampness. I would definitely practice on some scrap wood until you feel comfortable with this process before you start on the guitar. Just like the pore filler, I'll start on the back. You're just going to rub the mouse in really quick little circles like this. This first coat's pretty foolproof because the wood absorbs the oil easier now than it does later in the process. If the mouse starts to get dry as I'm working, I just dip it back into the mixture and beat it out again. After the back, I do the soundboard. I keep a small piece of cloth on hand too to get the crevices around the bridge and fretboard that the mouse is too big to get to. Next, I do the sides. 
then the heel, then I jump to the headstock, and last I do the neck shaft while I support it from the taped fretboard. Okay, done with the first coat, now I just have 14 more to go. Uh, the Ziri Cody looks crazy. I think it's just gonna keep on looking better and better with every coat I put on it. Now I'm gonna let it dry for three hours and then come back and do coat number two. Before I start each additional coat, I lightly scuff it up with fine steel wool to prep the surface, then wipe it down with tack cloth to remove any dust. Again, I start with the back, then do the soundboard, then the sides, then the heel, then the headstock, and then the neck. Then I wait at least three hours and scuff, clean, and repeat. Here's the full third coat in fast motion so you can see it start to finish. You have to make a new mouse for every single coat. Be careful when you dispose of them because they are spontaneously combustible. The main thing you want to be thinking about is keeping the coats thin. It's better to go too thin than too thick, especially when you're doing this 15 times. All it takes is one drip to make an imperfection that's going to stick out like a sore thumb. Honestly, nobody is really going to notice a drip except the builder, but still, we, we spent a lot of time building this guitar, so it's worth it to take your time and just do this as well as you possibly can. So I finished putting the 15th coat on last night and that whole thing went really well. Everything went really easily and I'm really happy with how, how it looks right now. I was going to use that Stumac polishing compound and polish it a little bit but I was trying with some scraps that I had been finishing alongside this and I couldn't get that to look any... I didn't like the look of the polished wood any more than I look like the look of this so I'm just going to stick with this. I think I'm going to rub some wax on the neck shaft to reduce friction for playability, but besides that, I'm gonna th I think I'm going to call it good now for the finish. I might come back in a couple months if I don't like how this wears and polish it or do something, but for now, I I'm really, really happy with it. The, the final, final, final step is to put the nut and the saddle in where the strings sit on and do that final setup. And that's another thing I've been going back and forth with whether I was gonna do that myself or not, and um, I think I've decided I'm just gonna take it to a professional and have it that done right, because that's one of the biggest factors for playability and the ease of playability, and I just wanna make sure that's done really, really well, because I'd hate to invest all that time into the guitar and then mess that final step up. It's just a whole different skill set, and I'm not comfortable with that, and I'm really not comfortable with making a video how to do it anyways. I'm gonna be taking it to Steve Spaulding in Ashland, Oregon, um, he repairs guitars for a living, so he's gonna do the final setup really, really well. I, I'll hopefully get some video of him doing what he does, and that'll be it. In the next video, I should have, we should have a playable guitar, and I should be able to play it for you guys. So thank you guys for sticking with me. This has been a very long video series, and it's been, yeah, it's been a lot of work, so I appreciate you guys watching my videos. Thank you to Worksharp Tools for sponsoring this whole series. Um, and yeah, don't forget to hit subscribe so you can see this guitar get played.